In this video, I'll be sharing with you seven drone moves that you can use to level up your wedding videos. At the end, I'll share with you two bonus tips that I use when capturing drone footage at weddings. Let's jump into it. Move one, the push-in. For this move, first, you wanna identify the subject of your shot. This can be a building, a person, or a nice composition on a landscape. Next, you'll take a hold of the control stick that controls your horizontal movement and you'll gently push it forward to push in on your subject. This move is great for bringing your viewer into the space that the next scene of your wedding video is gonna take place in. For example, you can use this move to bring your viewer into the space that the bride or groom is getting ready, or potentially bring them into the space that the ceremony is gonna be taking place or the reception is going to be taking place. The push in works great as an establishing shot. Move two, the rising pan. For this shot, you'll wanna start at an even level or below the subject of your shot. You'll then wanna lock the focus on the subject of your shot. Next, you wanna push the control stick that controls your vertical movement forward while simultaneously pushing the control stick that controls your horizontal movement, either right or left. This will raise your drone into the air while your drone also orbits around the subject of your shot. This is a highly dynamic movement that creates for a really interesting shot. Move three, the orbit. The orbit looks great at a variety of angles and compositions, so get creative with this one. I personally like starting my drone high above the subject of my shot and then centering the subject in my frame. Once you have the drone where you want it, go ahead and lock the focus on the subject of your shot and then you'll push the control stick that controls your horizontal movement either to the right or to the left and this will cause your drone to orbit around the subject. Move four, the parallel track. The parallel track looks great visually and is also a really simple move to do. For this move, start by composing your shot so that the subject is either on the left third or the right third of your frame. From here, you'll use the control stick that controls your horizontal movement to move the subject to your shot from the starting third of the frame to the opposite third of the frame. Or if you have a moving subject, you can make this shot a little bit more dynamic by tracking the subject through space on a parallel plane. Move five, the bird's eye. The bird's eye is a top-down shot that provides a really cool perspective to your viewer. To capture this shot, start by flying your drone directly above the subject of your shot. Then you'll adjust the gimbal so that your camera is facing directly down onto the subject. At this point, you'll wanna use the control stick that controls your horizontal movement of your drone to move the subject out of the frame entirely. You'll then use the horizontal control stick to pan above the subject of your shot and then continue panning over the subject until your subject is once again out of frame. If you wanna make this shot a little bit more dynamic, you can also utilize the control stick that controls the rotation of your drone to rotate your drone while it pans over top of your subject. Move six, the low flyover. This move is a really visually interesting shot because you have the juxtaposition of the bottom half of your frame moving quickly over top of the ground, while the top half of the frame appears to move a little bit more slowly through the sky. For this move, start by bringing your drone to a safe and comfortable distance above the ground. You'll then wanna push the horizontal control stick forward so that your drone flies over top of the ground. You can once again add in a rotation to this shot by using the vertical control stick to rotate your drone while your drone moves forward through space. I just wanna stress that you're safe and cautious with this shot Given that your drone is gonna be closer to the ground, it can be a little bit more dangerous and can increase the possibility that you run into something. This takes us to our seventh and final move. Move seven, the launching 360. To perform the launching 360, you first need to start by taking your drone directly above your subject. You'll then wanna angle the camera so that the shot is flat on with your subject. From here, you'll push the vertical control stick diagonally forward. This will cause your drone to raise higher in the air while simultaneously rotating in a circle. This move provides some symmetry to your shot that looks really interesting, and you can also use a speed ramp to make the shot a little bit more dynamic. When you're out shooting a wedding, I know that it can be really difficult to remember all the shots that you wanna get. Even if you have a shot list beforehand, you're not always able to consistently refer back to the shot list when you need to. Wedding days go by really quick and you're bouncing around from one spot to another trying to capture everything that you can. For this reason, I created an acronym that you can use to memorize these shots. That way you don't have to refer back to a shot list when you're trying to fly your drone. I know a lot of times I'll have my shot list on my phone and I can't really check my shot list and fly my drone at the same time, given that I'm using my phone to fly my drone. So the acronym that you wanna memorize is PROPELLER. P for push in, R for rising pan, O for orbit, P for parallel track, E for bird's eye, L for low flyover, and L for launching 360. You might be thinking, 
that's only seven <laughs> and there's nine letters in propeller. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I have two bonus tips for you that can help you when you're trying to capture your drone footage during weddings. Tip number one, enter 30 frames per second. I shoot almost all my drone footage at weddings in 30 frames per second. This allows me to play it back at normal speed if I want to and it, it's still gonna look great in the final video. Or if I need to smooth it out, I can slow it down a tiny bit so that it looks a little bit smoother in the final video. And tip number two, reverse the shot. If you're ever having trouble capturing a certain drone shot, try shooting the shot in reverse. Sometimes I find that it's easier for me to control the drone if I'm shooting a certain shot in reverse. You can then just reverse the shot in editing so that it plays back in the direction that you want it to. If you found this video helpful and would like more wedding videography tips, go ahead and click the first link in the description. I'll send you a one page PDF outlining the three step process that took me from booking five weddings per year to 25 weddings per year all the while increasing my prices in the process. This has allowed me to go from doing videography as a side hustle and it being something that I was passionate about and turning it into a full-time business that has now allowed me to leave my nine to five and do this thing that I love full-time. With that, if you found value in this video, it would also mean a ton to me if you hit the like button below. And if you wanna see more of this content in the future, go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.